Nut Nerd Podcast, Episode 309, Turn in Your Nerd Card. Welcome to the Not Nerd Podcast. I'm Nate Heath, and we are here to help you tech better. Here with me, as always, Mr. Dave Baylor. Well, hello. Oh, my my retinas. Yes. Did, did scales fall off my eyes? You were in crystal clear 1080p. Who would have thought that mankind could make such a high-resolution camera yes. and put it on an, a laptop? Yes. Uh, for everyone besides Dave, he is referencing my <laughs> new built-in 1080p FaceTime camera in my new MacBook Pro M1 Pro 16-inch. Wow, that's a lot of words. Yes. And uh, the big joke here, if you couldn't find some of the sarcasm in my voice, was we've had 1080p webcams for a decade. It's just that Apple yes. has been squandering their <laughs> yes. the cameras, I guess, for their phones. They never Ugh. put a good one in their laptop. So I got this uh, crusty old 2019 M1 <laughs> MacBook here, and it's got a, a paltry 720p camera that they yes. do a little bit of, uh, what is it, a machine learning and yes. artificial intelligence to make it look sharper, but... It ain't, it ain't all that. It ain't all that. But uh, besides the webcam, the laptop, I've had it for six days now. Um, it is amazing. And I will talk more about it maybe next week when I get a little more time. But uh, these are pretty stinking cool, cool new machines. And uh, I am enjoying it so far. Very, very good. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you're able to connect to the internet that much faster yes yes i i can podcast that much quicker now yes as if i need to talk any faster well let us move on to some follow-up and uh i did want to address something right near the top that many of you probably noticed this last week as you were doing your copious scanning of our weekly show notes uh, <laughs> with all the stories that we talk about. And you might have noticed that there was a lack of bullet points uh, on Ooh. some platforms for the show notes. And uh, it's something that I had done for a long time, but I realized a lot of podcast apps and even like YouTube and stuff, they just don't handle stuff formatted with bullet points very well mm. uh so i just took them off so hopefully if you do look at the show notes uh they're a little easier to read on your platform of choice but uh don't fear nothing was broken i'm just trying some new things out so yes the show notes have changed we uh try to put all the links in there and i know the links don't show up in a lot of places but you can always head to the website and everything should look correct there and you can always listen to the podcast there as well and possibly yes. find some other things when we get around to posting them as we always talk about doing now the the next item on the list i read as party so I was getting uh, excited, but what is it really? Yes, the Apple Holiday Return Party. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's policy. Policy. Okay. And yes. so I uh, was looking at my order for my MacBook Pro M1 Pro laptop, <laughs> and I was curious when I needed to return it by, if I was going to return it, which more on that another episode. But I did... Note, and I double-checked through another source, that anything that you buy from Apple right now, you can return it up to, I believe, January 4th or 9th. Wow. Sometime early January, so much like the Amazon's hol generous holiday return policy for anything that you buy now, Apple has the same thing. So if you're wanting to try something out, now is the best time to do it because you have a long time over the typical two weeks to return your product. Wow, that's great. So you could, in effect, use one of their computers, earn a bunch of money doing a bunch of projects, and then just return it. Return and, it, yeah. yeah. Get all your projects done, and then yeah. uh, just go back to your slower, older computer. Yeah. Crappy life tips would be the Yes, that, yes. So uh, unethical life tips <laughs> life tips i think yeah. i'm on that subreddit yeah <laughs> uh we talked about this a while ago and we weren't sure and i'm still not quite sure how it's all going to work but netflix has begun mm -hmm. to roll out its games features so it is coming first to android or the google play store 
And uh, then they say with iOS on the way, yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. They sure know how to underwhelm people. I know we were <laughs> making fun of this last time, but holy cow, this is just, yes. what, what is the point here? Yes. This so uh, on the Android, I believe it's going to be, there's Netflix games that you can download from the Google Play Store that are then tied to your Netflix subscription, which is how people think they're going to get around Apple's whole games within games type of thing. So uh, users will be able to choose from one of five games, Stranger Things 1984, Stranger Things 3, the game, Shooting Hoops, Card Blast, and Teeter Up. And Stranger Things 4. Yes. No. Yes. I did see a, a trailer. Stranger Things 4 is coming soon to Netflix uh, near you. I might have to turn in my nerd card. I still have not seen season three. I, I was trying to remember where we're at in the, yeah. uh, I might be in the same place as you. But yeah, so Netflix, they're going to have some games that are part of your regular subscription as they try to expand, as every company tries to expand into all areas of your entertainment life. So yes, if you're interested in those games, check them out. And let us know what you think. Yes, everyone wants a part of everything you do. Or more importantly, they want a, a piece of that cash action. Yes, yes. More subscribers. I, I clicked on the Stranger Things 1984, and it looks like a very 1984 8-bit type uh, adventure game. So Very cool. Uh, Join Hopper and the kids for bruising <laughs> missions around Hawkins oh, and the man. Upside Down in this stylized retro adventure filled with collectibles. Can't wait. Yes, yes. It's, uh, it does have three and three quarters stars on 531 reviews on the Google Play Store, so <laughs> not all bad. No, that's better than a kick in the teeth. Yes, yes. And I did want to uh, give myself some kudos. I have recommended that uh, people not upgrade to Windows 11. There's just mm. no reason to do it right now. And I've had uh, clients and people say, hey, my computer wants me to upgrade to Windows 11. Should I do it? And I say, nope, pass. There is no reason Windows 10 is going to keep working. And this article I found, Microsoft fixes Windows 11 features failing due to an expired certificate. Mm. So <sighs> a little bit of evidence that you were giving the right advice. Yes. Yeah, Windows 10 is stable at work. However, I did look to see if I could install Windows 11 on my Parallels uh, virtual yes. machine, I guess. I'm not signed up for the same thing you are, apparently. It wouldn't, no. it wouldn't do it. it. Wouldn't I, let you. I did. I was able to do it on my new M1, and you have to do Windows 11 because that's the only one that has an ARM-based version while wow, we're getting deep here mm -hmm. uh, to be able to work on the ARM-based Macs. Uh, I installed it, and then I was looking for the Microsoft Store. The Microsoft Store does not exist on Windows 11 ARM, so you cannot oh, of course. download normal apps. It's just <laughs> it's a, a comedy of errors. So stay on Windows 10. All that to say, stay on Windows 10. Yes, yeah. And also to say, it's time for Dave's Pro Tip of the Week. I know what I'm getting you for Christmas. Some Segway juice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to yes. help your Segways. Uh, segways for dummies. You just take a swig of it. Before well, it's you hard talk. to ever segue away from Windows 11. Yeah, that's true. All right. So today's Dave's Pro Tip of the Week. I came across this one as more and more people are upgrading from iOS 14 to iOS 15 and they're upgrading their shiny uh, MacBooks from iOS uh, Big Sur to uh, Mac uh, OS Monterey. 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 There are new features coming about and so I thought I would talk about one specifically to iOS 15. And this is actually a feature that's new to me even. I would kind of heard about it but I never really implemented it. So the name of this tip is reduce background noise on FaceTime calls. Now, you and I don't make a lot of calls back and forth, no. but sometimes we do use FaceTime. And if we're in a, if we're ever in an instance where there's a lot of wind blowing or noise going on, or maybe we're on in a car or something like that, there is an option to clarify the voice signal going out to the other end. And here's how you do. So you're on your FaceTime call, you open up Control Center, and you can do that by swiping down from the upper right-hand corner on Face ID enabled devices. And you might even see this on older phones if you swipe up from the bottom, um, if you have one of those touch, 
touch buttons. The, what are those circle things at the bottom of a phone that they used to have home, years and years home ago? Button. Home Yeah, so you can maybe swipe up to get your control center. But when you're on the call, you will notice uh, as you swipe down a little button, and it is called mic mode. And you tap on mic mode, and it'll bring up a little menu, and there you'll have a standard voice isolation or wide spectrum. Now, if the person on the other end is having trouble hearing, you click voice isolation and it's going to get rid of the noise. It's kind of like reverse noise isolation. If you put your AirPods in and you want to put on noise isolation, uh, this is sending it out to the other person. If they're having trouble hearing you, you can do isolation on your end to help clarify the voice signal. So, Nate, have you ever used standard voice isolation or wide spectrum on a FaceTime call before? No, I haven't. And I am going to add on to this a little bonus pro tip. When we think of FaceTime, we think of video calls, but there's also FaceTime audio calls. So if two people have an iPhone or whatever devices, and uh, maybe you have bad cell service or the call's just not working well, uh, you can do just the FaceTime audio calls Mm -hmm. uh, and use this feature as well. Uh, I was working on somebody's computer a a while back, and she lives way, you know, outside of good cell service, so she had like one spot in her living room or in her kitchen where she could maybe make a phone call and have somebody hear her. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So I told her about Wi-Fi calling, which is a whole nother thing, but uh, FaceTime audio, if you have a good Wi-Fi signal um, or even just in general, if it's two iOS devices, FaceTime audio can be a good thing. And this could even help more if you're in a noisy environment or if you want to have the person hear more of the environment either way between those settings. Yeah, maybe it's your, you're at a concert and you want them to hear the full spectrum and you yeah. just turn that sucker up and there's no noise cancellation at all. And um, so your mileage may vary, but this is just a new tool. Um, Apple's using a little bit of their technical prowess to uh, mess around with audio. This is all part of their audio spatialization and noise isolation and noise cancellation efforts that they've been making recently. So uh, try it out if you'd like. Um, I probably won't use it that often, but it's good to know that it's there. Yes, yes. Well, let us move on to our takes of the week. Uh, So there's big news this week that Facebook uh, by Meta (laughs) is shutting down their old facial recognition system. So um, what this is, is, you know, when you post a picture to Facebook, it'll try to auto tag and figure out who's in each picture. Well, they're shutting that But the article I found from BuzzFeed News is titled, Why Facebook Shutting Down Its Old Facial Recognition System Doesn't Matter. And uh, basically, they're saying because they're pivoting to the metaverse, where they're going to be collecting one million times more data (laughs) in the metaverse than or personal information uh, than just this one part of Facebook completely deleting the software. They're just turning it off because of some uh, privacy and regulatory issues. I always found this one helpful because, yeah, you post a picture of your family reunion and you can go through and it auto tags people's faces, but I can also see where there's concerns. Yeah. The article should have Facebook is shutting down their old system in lieu of a much more invasive, more yes. accurate, and <laughs> more uh, nefarious uh, version. But yes. who knows? Who knows what they've got in there? Yeah, that whole switch to to meta, it's kind of messes with your brain because you know what's going to happen. They're going to be like, oh, this device by Meta. And people are going to be like, oh, I'm so glad I have this instead of that crappy Facebook yes. stuff. <laughs> yes. Like, I, wait a minute. <laughs> I did thing. notice when you open Instra- Instagram now, the little splash screen does show uh, Instagram from Meta. Yeah. Their little logo. They're just kind of whitewashing history and getting the bad Facebook taste out of everybody's mouth. Yes. Yes, indeed. And uh, not to be outdone, Microsoft had their Ignite conference, uh, which is kind of their developers conference this week. Wow. And they've introduced Microsoft Mesh for mm. uh, their Teams product, where it's kind of a... Uh, virtual reality meeting space where you create your avatar and it's from the waist up. So it's these floating top half of bodies right. uh, in a meeting space and, and, and doing their thing. So Yeah, weird. Yeah, I was listening to uh, Exponent podcast and they were talking mm. about all this stuff. And um, the guy there, Ben Thompson, was actually kind of 
warming up to the idea of virtual reality spaces in the, in the, um, the new world in which we live where people aren't necessarily working from home. They're just working online yes. no matter where they happen to be positioned. And having a face-to-face -face virtual encounter is sometimes a better experience than like a Zoom call. So Yes, yes. And so... And you can also, uh, besides your avatar, you can do, uh, they call it, where'd it go? I was just on the page here. It is holoportation mm. uh, with their HoloLens device. So much yes. like Facebook and their uh, Quest devices. And I think they're calling that uh, Horizon uh, workspaces uh, on the Quest platform, something like that. Oh, yes. And the Microsoft HoloLens 2 for a mere $2,975, normally $3,500. So you get $525 off if you order now. What a bargain. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, but the HoloLens is more of an augmented reality where like the Quest or Horizon or what Meta's version <laughs> is the virtual reality. This is like monitors that you can see through. So they show a picture of somebody playing with a 3D thing in space in the shop to try to figure out how right. it works. And right. uh, But none of our listeners are going to be getting that, and they probably won't be using the Microsoft Mesh anytime soon either. So we will move on. You know what? This has inspired me. Next time we meet, I'm going to put my screen in my uh, Oculus headset so that you and I can... So what you're going to be looking at is me in a headset. Yes. What I'm going to be looking at is a 32-inch monitor with you know, yes. all these uh, news feeds and things going much, on. Much like the image that I Photoshop into most of our show art. But <laughs> yes. that was your older drone <laughs> yeah. uh, thing. Uh, I need to get an updated one. So please do that. <laughs> yeah, and uh, we'll might, do a photo shoot with your <laughs> Oculus. This might be the opportunity. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, well, if you're looking for an opportunity to spend a lot of money on an iPhone, a robotics engineer, dismayed by the lack of a USB-C iPhone, decided to take matters into his own hands by making one. So he took an iPhone 10, which is now, what, three, <laughs> four years old, and he modified it to have a USB-C port instead of a lightning port. So he had to uh, play with some controllers inside and create a custom adapter that was small mm -hmm. enough to go in there. Uh, and he has put it on eBay. Now, you might be saying, hey, I might get myself in this auction. Well, uh, if you hear this Wednesday, the day it comes out, you get on it quick because it ends Thursday at 8 a.m. It currently stands at... One hundred thousand, one hundred dollars. You know, you know what, Nate? The guy could have just got an adapter that goes from Lightning to USB C, but no, he decided to no. do this. And somebody out there wants to spend a hundred grand on this abomination. So it yes. is a crazy time we live in. He should have just made an NFT out of it and sold the rights to it without actually yes. selling the thing. Yes, it's a like I said, it's an iPhone ten, sixty four gigs, and he says in the description on eBay, by bidding on this auction, you agree that you will not restore, update, or erase this phone. You will not use it as your daily phone. You will not open it. I guarantee you that the phone will work when you receive it, but if you don't follow the aforementioned guidelines, you are on your own. So you basically can't do anything. It's just frozen in time. Yes. I mean, you can use it, but you can't upgrade it. And it's an iPhone 10, so it's already pretty old. So it's, I don't know who on earth is bidding for this thing at a, over $100,000, 150 different bids. A drug cartel who needs to launder some money. That's <laughs> yes. who. Via USB-C. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's, a, that's an odd one. Um, I have my new AirPods Gen 3, there's the AirPods Pro. We've talked about some of the Beats products in the past. Well, this week they released their new Beats Fit Pro. Mm -hmm. And uh, in reading about this, it looks like these are very close to AirPods Pro. They have the noise canceling and all that stuff, uh, but they just have a different fit. They kind of have that little hook thing that some of the headphones have that are supposed to... Uh, the title from The Verge says, Sporty AirPod Pros with Better Sound. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. And they cost ever a bit as much. I think they're around 200 bucks. Yes. That's what they cost. Yeah. Yes. Actually, actually, a little bit cheaper than AirPods Pro. 
Yes, yes. Uh, it does say there is, so the Verge always does good stuff and bad stuff. Good stuff, comfortable, secure fit, very good noise cancellation, and transparency mode. All the Apple ecosystem features you'd expect, so all the, they work well with iPhone like the AirPods mm-hmm. do. Bad stuff, no wireless charging at this price is rough. Less support for Android features than this, the Beats Studio Buds. Seriously, they should have had wireless charging. <laughs> I think they like wireless charging over there at The Verge. Yeah, so between the AirPods, all the different AirPods available, and the different Beats products available, there is something for just about everybody out there. They're just not very cheap. But uh, good no- another noise-canceling option, as we've talked about before. Yes. Uh, this last one is a security and privacy story that I saw a while back. And how this was not a thing... Previous to now, I will remind people we are the most nonpartisan tech podcast on the internet. So this comes from the Washington Post in their national security section. Commerce Department announces new rule aimed at stemming sale of hacking tools to Russia and China. How is this not a thing? I don't know. I would think that that would be a thing for any country outside the United States. Yes. Yeah, why well, it would bar sales of hacking software and equipment to China and Russia as well to a number of other countries of concern yeah. without a license from the department's Bureau of Industry and Security. Why anybody was selling why is it anybody legally selling hacking tools at all? But my well, goodness people. Well that group over in Israel that was selling their yes, hacking tools. The to, NSO tool that yeah, yeah keeps coming Pegasus. up in stories and Pegasus yeah. and yeah, I would think even even before then that we would have a policy to prevent such behavior in the United States. Yes. Apparently not. Oh, my goodness. Well, let's cleanse our palate with a little bonus odd take. Came across this one from our friend over at kotki.org, and the headline is, Japan's best mundane Halloween costumes for 2021. And uh, it's become a tradition in Japan to dress up in mundane costumes that depict everyday situations for Halloween. And once again, Johnny Waldman of Spoon and Tamago has collected some of the best. And uh, the the first one, that's what got me to put it into the show notes. It is a uh, guy sitting cross-legged on the floor with a gaming controller leaning a bit to the side. The caption is, guy who leans in as his Mario Kart character turns a curve. (laughs) That's his Halloween costume. He just, I'm leaning in on the curve. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Totally. We've all, Uh, either we do it ourselves or we have people. It's always, uh, for me, my wife, um, I I hope she never listens to this program. In the old original Super Mario Brothers, where she would lift the controller every time she jumps. Oh, yes, to jump, yes. She jumps, she pushes, and it's like, man, when the Wii came out, eventually, decades later, it's like finally a console for people like you. Yes, so he does have a couple more here and then some link to some more, but there's another one. That cashier who looks away as you enter your debit pin. So it's just, (laughs) I mean, the mundane of the mundane, but it's just clever. A girl who started decluttering but ended up on her phone. She just laid on the ground on her cell phone with all of her crap around her. (laughs) So I haven't dug much deeper, but he does have a link at the bottom to see the rest of the ones he collected and then some from previous years as well. But I thought that was a, a fun little uh, look and a fun little thing that they, a tradition in Japan, according mm. to this article. Um, but never mundane, our picks, picks of the week. So week. Nate, I've been on a, a purchasing spree again, oh, hoping my as wife I. doesn't listen to this program. So I have purchased a number of things. I mean, I've got weeks worth of things I could talk about. But today I wanted to talk about something from none other than the company Wise, which you've heard of before, I'm sure. Oh, yes. Uh, They they sell cameras, among other things. I bit the bullet, got it at a pretty good price, and it really wasn't the price. It was the in-stock problem was the main problem. Mm. I got the Wise thermostat and installed it without too much uh, Welcome to the club. Yeah, so the Wise thermostat, uh, I, apparently, was that a previous pick for you? I, I think I picked it as a pick. I know I discussed it briefly, but please pick it again. Well, we had this old Honeywell rectangular white thing oh, that yes. runs off of a watch battery type yeah. deal. And, uh, you know, it was, it was fine, but we're redoing our downstairs area, and I'm like, I can't live with this thing another day. So I replaced it, and there was only one. I only had to go back 
up to the furnace. Yes, our furnace is in our attic, if you can believe yes, it. Yes, ours uh, is as well. Uh, so I had to go back up there twice because I am an idiot. Uh, but after the, I came back down, it worked. It was like, the first time I did it, I'm like, oh no, what have I done? I'm going to have to send this thing back. Second time, I'm like, okay, this works. Now, I do not have air conditioning, only a heater. So this product really is not that necessary at all. It yes. is pretty easy to just set a temperature and walk away when you have a heater uh, only. But it works quite well, and we will be getting air conditioning probably next year sometime. The thing I like about it, now that winter is finally here in the Pacific Northwest, if I'm cold and I'm in bed and I don't want to get out of bed and walk downstairs and turn on the heater, I can do it from my bed. It's yes. amazing. <laughs> it's yes. amazing. Yes. No, uh, it is nice. And I did look. Uh, I picked it uh, February 3rd, 2021. So oh, okay. almost a year ago. Right. Uh, back when we were, it was episode 269, Nice Hedge, uh, when we were doing our video uh, podcast in that short stint. But yes, yeah. the Wise Thermostat, I don't use it much. My wife uses it more, but it is a very nice, nice thing to have. Well, the lady and I went out to the movie last night. We went to go see Dune finally in a theater. Mm, nice. And, um, I have some negative things to say about the theater that we were in, <laughs> but I will refrain from sharing those on this podcast. But we grabbed a quick bite to eat, and I'm like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn the heater on before we go home because mm. we're going to walk in that door and it's going to be cold because yes. the kids were all gone. Uh, so anyway, I flipped it on a few minutes before we got home and it was nice and toasty when we arrived. So yes. uh, modern technology, I love it. And I think, if I recall, it was about 68 bucks or something like that yeah. is what I got it for. So it's not too expensive. It's a fair price for what it does for sure. Yes, and I believe it was friend of the show, Jared, that was just asking me uh, this week about smart thermostats. They recently moved into a new home, and I recommended the Wise one. It is, at the price, uh, has everything I need for yeah. it. So yeah. I can't imagine it doing uh, anything well, my pick is on the other end of the spectrum as far as uh, price goes. Now... This is the Shift Cam Pro Grip. Uh, you actually got to see this a while back. I got this. It is a, a oh, grip yes. uh, for your smartphone. Now, this was one of my Kickstarter uh, purchases that I originally <laughs> backed on June 16th, 2020. So, uh, much over a year ago, 16 months ago or something. Um, so it was delivered on September 8th. So it took uh, well over a year to get here. Uh, now I paid $89 and I got the accessory kit with it. I was looking today and it is currently $120 and I believe $30 for the extra uh, accessory kit. So now you might be wondering, well, what is it, Nate? It is a very ergonomic grip where your phone slides into it and then on the right side it has uh, almost kind of like a traditional camera right side where it's thicker so the overall thing is kind of t-shaped but then it has a bluetooth shutter button where your trigger finger is for mm -hmm. easy photo taking and uh there's and for many... those of <laughs> for those of you outside the u.s your index finger yes uh, index finger pointer finger <laughs> <laughs> they don't have guns yes uh and so then it has a slider that you put your phone in and the slider rotates so you can do vertical or uh, portrait or landscape mm -hmm. with it. But then it also has wireless charging. So a big part of the idea is if you're going to be out shooting photos all day, you're worried about battery life, which I'm not really on my new 13 Pro, but it has a built-in battery where it'll also do wireless charging on your phone uh, while giving you the grip. Now, the accessory pack, you get a little strap that you know, your hand goes into to keep it a little more secure. Mm -hmm. um, and then it has a cold shoe mount for the top for uh, attaching accessories. I don't know that at the $120 plus price uh, that you necessarily need this, but if maybe there's somebody, a spouse on your Christmas list that is a huge smartphone photographer or an avid smartphone photographer, I'm not going to judge them on their size, mm -hmm. uh, but this could be something to look at. And Shift Cam, interestingly, when I've probably talked about them before, it was about they were one of the companies that made uh, external lenses for your iPhones. Yeah. Well, with the newer iPhones, there is not much of a market for that stuff. So they've pivoted and have a couple other products like this ProGrip 
Yeah. Uh, but it, it does feel very good in the hand. I've used it some, and it is more, obviously, it's going to be more bulky than just having your phone, uh, but it's much more comfortable than doing the, the finger split to hold it on the top of the bottom and then, the claw. you know, the carpal tunnel in your thumb from being at weird angles and all that stuff. Yes, the claw position. Yeah, I think I need to get one of these things, especially if I go out on a hike or something like that, because I'm always grabbing the phone and pulling out of my pocket, taking a picture, stuffing it back in my phone. Now, if I had that, I could just kind of leave it tethered to my hand, so it's yes. an extension of my hand. I've got the grip mount, I've got the quick access to my uh, index finger to shoot a photo, and with the wireless charging, I can flip it for a portrait photo or a landscape yeah. photo or a landscape video. There's no such thing in my life as vertical video. <laughs> yes. But not having a cable there to get tied up when you're flipping orientations is kind of a neat feature that it's wirelessly charging. Yes. Um, and you can just shoot all day with the thing because your phone lasts a long time plus the additional charge. So I think it's a great product, but I would agree with you that the 130 bucks is a little outside of my range. I might rather spend that towards the purchase of a standalone camera. <laughs> yes. That, that's uh, only a couple hundred dollars more maybe. Yes, and I did look just as a quick sidestep. Apple did some amazing videos to show off their cinematography mode yeah. uh, for the iPhones 13, and they were using a grip on there that I was very curious. So uh, I tracked it down. It's called the Beast Grip, um, or the Beast Grip Pro. Uh, mm. That one runs $140, but it is a pretty uh, wild setup for, wow. um, obviously, they used it when... I know that when Apple does a video like that, no expense is spared. So I was like, huh, I'm curious what kind of grip they're using. And it showed right. up in multiple different shoots. Uh, so the Beast Grip Pro at $140. But you can also find you know, much cheaper things like this on Amazon. Uh, but this one is really well designed. I haven't seen anything this uh, ergonomic, we'll say, on uh, as these Shift Cam Pro Grip. Yeah, oh. the, the beast grip. I think I saw a guy at a basketball or at a volleyball game the other day that had one similar to this. I hope he didn't spend 140 bucks on it. Yes, but but yeah, maybe he works for Apple. Maybe, maybe he was the one that made those videos. You should have talked to him. I should have. I should have went up there and awkwardly said, "Sir, can I? Can you tell me about your setup?" <laughs> okay. I actually did interrupt a guy who had a Sony Alpha camera, and I said, "Hey, tell me about your camera." And he was more than happy to tell me. So nice. Uh, don't uh, don't feel intimidated by asking people that about technology because typically yes. they're happy to tell you about what they most got. of most of us nerds are uh, yeah. definitely down and b script does make some lenses uh and stuff as well but i i really don't know how many external lenses you need especially if you've got an iphone 13 pro but there were some guys on reddit who were this is kind of a sidestep uh who were uh talking about some astral photography they had done of the Orion Nebula, uh, nebula uh, the mm. Horsehead Nebula, if you recall seeing that. And I was thinking, I want to do that with my phone. Now, you can get pictures of stars with your phone. Yes. And these guys were using telescopes that were probably in the $1,000 range. It was not unattainable. Mm. Yeah. Uh, very affordable. And I was a little envious, but I'm like, I want to take a picture of the Orion Nebula with my phone someday. And I bet we're going to get there. Yeah, I know uh, Austin Mann, who does uh, a lot of travel photography, and he does a big iPhone review. Um, I think it was actually on his MacBook, the new MacBook Pro review. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, he was showing processing some of the astral photography uh, that he was doing, and it is just amazing. I don't know if he was doing that on his iPhone. I think it was a different camera, but he was just you know, talking about how he's taking... 120, uh, you know, 112 megapixel photos and processing them all into one night shot that is a uh, pretty insane processing power in these new laptops. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so we took about 25 different side steps there on my pick of the week. <laughs> but uh, much like the person that you asked about their setup, we love talking about this stuff. And that's why we like doing this podcast. That's right. Yeah, so uh, thank you for listening. We have been getting, you know, some comments and questions and posts and stuff. We love love hearing from you guys on all the different socials and uh, sharing it with a friend so that we can all get out there and tech better. Ooh, is virtualmeet.com. 
taken. It seems like that's going to be a thing at some time. Now, M double E T or M E A T? M E A T. Ooh. Okay. Oh, I spelled virtual wrong. That would. <laughs> vitrual meat is not taken. Ventricle meat? Means. 